Welcome back. We got episode seven here. We got uh, Miles Dash here. He's one of the most uh, decorated athletes in his sport and uh, one of the best base jumpers on earth. So thank you for coming to the show, my dude. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm cooking right in the middle of our podcast. <laughs> well, it's all good, dude. I love it. <laughs> it's all good. I love it. I don't know anyone who's cooked on a podcast who's like, you know, not doing a cooking show. <laughs> I like it. Setting trends. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, opening new avenues, you know. Maybe there will be a cooking show in the future. Hell yeah. Are you skydiving? What's going on in Arizona? Uh yeah. Yeah, I'm uh yeah, it's uh it's going good. The I'm at outside of Denny's right now because uh the Wi Fi is kinda shitty at the drop zone and then uh the planes are so loud, so I'm just in the car. But yeah, the jumping's been good. I got my first balloon jump this Friday. So oh, sweet! How'd that go? No, I, I'm doing it. The, my first one's this coming Friday. Oh, oh, coming up! Zero airspeed exits. That's what life's all about, right there, dude. It's like air, skydiving's rad, but the plane's doing 100 miles an hour and it just throws you. But then you go do a base jump, or you do a, a balloon jump, or a helicopter exit, and it just changes the game. Look at that. That looks pretty delicious, huh? That does look good. Got some toast on the side or what? It's sausage, eggs, and cheese. And I'm going to throw it in a burrito because I'm not going to eat it all right now. There's no chance. It's way too many eggs. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I woke up this morning and the weather just sucks. It's all cloudy, but it's not snowing. Um, It's windy, so you can't go flying, can't go base jumping right now. So... (laughs) complacency dude i can't wait to get complacent in this new sport you know yeah it's funny i joke about that all the time but it's true man it happens complacency kills and and uh you can see it start to sprout at at different places and different times and and uh yeah don't get complacent because that's when that's when you make mistakes when you're not on your a game thinking about what you need to do for your b game if something goes wrong and you got to reach into the c cup because you're like oh my god what's happening what do i do now you got to be ready to do what you're doing when you're doing what we do because uh things are happening quick so um yeah be ready on your a game and um when you get complacent then you just forget about what um what your uh, EPs are, emergency procedures, and uh, you always got to have those in the back of your mind, ready to rock and roll, ready to react to any given situation, and if you're not, then you should just stay home and cook breakfast, that's what I'm doing today, you know, I just know that today's not my day to go out and jump, so, you know, you can't win them all, usually you do when you're me, but, you know, if today I didn't, I'm <laughs> going back to bed. <laughs> I was kind of wondering how, uh, when you started off, how did you get into like skydiving and base and like, where, where were you kind of like as a kid to get you to where you started and kind of where you are now? Yeah. Skydiving, you know, it's my favorite sport. I kind of, I kind of fell into skydiving. I was, um, living in Tahoe and, um, I've always wanted to skydive since I was about eight years old. I was playing soccer and, um, this guy just kind of skydived in and landed on our field. And uh, let me grab this um, Yeah, no worries. here real quick before it burns. Speaking of complacency when you're cooking, let me grab a plate here real quick. And uh, we, uh, yeah, we were playing soccer, and this dude just comes skydiving down and, and lands, like, kind of right on our soccer field. And we were in Ohio visiting family, and um, it was like 4th of July, you know, we're out playing soccer, and... This dude comes landing with, with smoke on his foot, and it was really cool. We um, we just kind of stopped the game, watched the dude come land right next to us, and it was just like, that's what I want to do, go skydiving, man. That's that's the sport for me. And um, that was when I was eight years old, and I never had an opportunity to go skydiving. You have to be 18 in America, and I didn't know where to go, but um, luckily in college I met um, – I met some really cool people. This guy, Christian Arden, introduced me to Jimbo Fritch, who um, owned a bungee jumping company, and he came and stayed at our place in Chico. And um, I just started doing ground crew for him, um, bungee jumping, like I would go out. It, would, um, it was technically gray area in the legality of the, the, the bungee missions that we were doing because of the, the, 
train bridge that we were on, it wasn't like a, a you know, we didn't have permission to be there. So I would be the ground crew guy out watching for trains and cops driving down the road on the radio. Nope, everything's cool. Um, we're good. And I would do all my um, college um, homework there. I, I did. I wrote a lot of uh, uh, term papers and some essays while sitting out there in the middle of the dark. Um, mountain lions creeping around me and stuff while I'm kicking it in the car, uh, writing writing papers. And uh, anyways, I met Jimbo. And I moved up to Squaw Valley after I graduated college um, to become a PE teacher. And um, instead of becoming a PE teacher, I figured I'd take a year and go skiing. And then I was going to take another year and go surf, or at least six months each. And that first uh, skiing year, six months, turned into 11 and a half years uh, living in Squaw Valley, uh, Palisades Tahoe now. And I moved into a house, uh, the Primal House, with uh, Jim Fritch and um, and. Tucker and Jammer and uh, there was a whole crew there, Reardon and uh, MC. Uh, we had um, Christian Arden. We had a, a like it was a million people living in the house. Some pe- some people would move in, some people would move out. But we had a guy living in the back, underneath the house, in the sauna. And I met him one day, and his name is Frank Gambali. And I'm like, "What do you do?" He goes, "I live in the sauna." I'm like. Okay, cool. Right on. <laughs> nice to meet you. How long have you lived there? Oh, about six months. I'm like, wow, I've only lived here three months. I've never met you. That's pretty wild. But um, Gambler, um, he's like, here, check this out. Check this video out. And he would he would kind of like say, like give a disclaimer, like you never saw this, okay? And, uh, and it was him base jumping um, off of like a bank building in downtown L.A. It was pretty wild. And... Uh, Sorry, this cable, man. It's hard to make breakfast and two cables at the same time. But uh, Gambler, he would show us these videos, and it's him, like, uh, it's him jumping off these buildings. And I'm like, holy crap, that's crazy. And then he also had skydiving videos, too. And I'm like, skydiving videos? That's what I want to do. I thought he was out of his mind base jumping, you know? I'm all, that's crazy. That's dangerous. That's gnarly. Because it just looked like it. You know, you see someone jump in the parachute, wham, and then whoo, 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 land. Whoa, that happened way too fast. How did you do that, you know? Oh, it takes a lot of years of practice and training and this and that. And uh, But anyways, I met Frank, and he, um, I saw some of his skydiving videos. I'm like, where do you do that? That's something I want to do. And he's like, you got a credit card? I'm like, yeah, let's go. So we went down to, I made an appointment um, to jump at Skydance Skydiving, Yolo County Airport. You only live once down in Davis, California. And uh, that's my home DZ. And uh, even though I live far away, I could, I could go frequent there, um, go jump there every once in a blue moon nowadays since I live so far away. But uh, I went down with Frank and learned how to skydive with him. And, um, and yeah, it was, it was September 6th, 1995. I'll never going to forget it. It's, it was one of those times where, okay, you learn, you do eight hours of ground school, you learn all your emergency procedures, you learn what to do in case of this, what to do in case of that. And then you have two instructors holding on to you for your first jump and you jump out accelerated free fall style. And then once you go through all of the, um, you know, the heading, um, altimeter checks and the uh, um, practice ripcord pulls and all the things. Um, you get to five five thousand feet, wave off and pull. As soon as your parachute opens, the two guys that were holding on to you just disappear. There's like little dots, just like gone. You know, like and then you see a little parachute open. And you're like, oh my god, I thought that guy just died. And you thought that that was like the wily e. coyote when he like disappears, and then you see the poof. That's kind of what it looked like to me, and I was just laughing under canopy. And uh, yeah, that 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 first skydive when we jumped out. And I thought everything was going to be flat, but when you're on the hill and you're sliding sideways, and you got a guy down below you and a guy above you, and, and the whole earth is sideways, and you're just like, as soon as that happened for me, jumping out of the plane, it was like, oh, hook, line, and sinker, man. I'm all, this is what I want to go do for the rest of my life. This is too awesome, you know? And uh, yeah, skydiving just hooked me, and lots of people tell their stories about skydiving, how I became addicted to skydiving when I, you know, and uh, (laughs) that's how they start their skydiving story. I became addicted to skydiving. It's true, though. Um, My first jump was hook, line, and sinker. Just swallow the bait, swallow the hook, swallow the line. (laughs) Now I'm going for the pole, dude. I don't know. That's weird. But, um, you know, I I just really loved it. Um, 
it just um, tickled my fancy. And next thing I know, I'm living in a tent at the drop zone, quit my job as a landscape construction uh, guy for the summer and uh, moved out to the drop zone, living in a tent for a couple of years and just packing parachutes. Um, everything was in jump tickets back then. It wasn't like, uh, it wasn't, I didn't really um, deal in real currency. Everything was like, how many jump tickets is that? Oh, dinner, huh? Mm, that's like a jump ticket and a half. I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to get snacks and just, you know, spend half a jump ticket and like get skinny at the drop zone. As you see, lots of skydivers, they don't take time to eat. They're too busy jumping. And that was me back in the day. And, uh, um, just jumping and that's all I did was go to EFS, just jump my butt off, dude, and just go scout out my brains out. It was so much fun. And, uh, yeah. And then from there I started watching some of these videos from Frank and Bali, you know, um, he showed me one jumping off of the Trollvagen Spire in, uh, Norway and he just had like ski clothes on cause it was cold, you know, you got to dress warm and he jumps and he's falling and on the video, he starts tracking, and he's going. On the video, it looks like he's going up. He's just flying. I'm like, dude, dude, you're flying, man. Like, like your body. You're flying your body. He's like, I know, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? And that's when I'm like, okay, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to jump off of the earth and fly my body. And it took me a couple of years. Um, I did a lot of ground crew, and uh, learned how to pack. Learn how to. Um, jump, read conditions, do the whole thing before my first jump. And in, um, two years later in 97 in June, I was making my first base jump, um, for Hill bridge. It was a, a beautiful place to learn. <clears throat> Landing area is a little bit sketchball. You're on the side of a hill on a slope, but you learn, um, you got to learn quick there. You know, now I live in Twin Falls, Idaho, where I could teach base jumping in a very user-friendly environment where the landing area is huge. There are obstacles always in life, and uh, here there are obstacles, but it's kind of almost 50-50. you got plenty of places to land and um, plenty of places to crash, and it's like a good ratio. It's like half. But um, Auburn, you had like you had like a 10% chance of having a good landing and a 90% chance of like tumbling down a hill into a river or into a tree, you know? So, um, you're a product of your environment. So put yourself in a good environment. And that's what I did is, uh, I learned from Frank. Um, and then, um, when he passed, um, jumping Yosemite running from the Rangers, he drowned in the river trying to escape, um, uh, getting caught by the Rangers in Yosemite. And it was worth that much to him to try to run away from, from them. And, and, and he didn't read the river properly and drown. But when Frank died, um, Shane McConkey and I, we were both learning from him. We got together and kind of finished our training, if you will. Um, because <clears throat> back then it was all mentorships. There weren't base courses. And um, you go get a mentor to teach you what's up. And you basically do an apprenticeship through him, like driving ground crew. Um, helping um him teach his courses and that kind of thing and then um yeah you just kind of that's that's just how it worked and then nowadays you can go out and sign up for a course online you know it's pretty crazy buy a buy a rig through ebay you know it's kind of kind of really crazy but um you even got your own course now exactly and i got my own school in twin falls and i moved here in 2004 Wow, been teaching base jumping for 18 years now, and I uh, got a pretty good handle on it, <laughs> dialing it in, and uh, it's been a really fun ride, and, and just the people that you meet, and the experiences that you have, and the, the travels when you go meet these people that you've taught, or people that you've met in some different places in the world, and you meet them in another place in the world, it's just, that's one of my favorite things in life, is traveling, and hanging out with cool people in cool places, and, and you get to bounce and rub elbows with, with some uh really awesome folks in, in, in amazing places in the world. And that's, that's what I really love about this sport and, um, uh, and these experiences that you have. Life is about having experiences, like awesome experiences, I believe. And, uh, and I'm, that's what I'm going for is maximum enjoyment of life and full on, um, full experience training for, for longevity. I want to survive this sport so that I'm 80 years old, kicking it in a wheelchair huh, or I mean a rocking chair, <laughs> hopefully not a wheelchair. Maybe it will be, but, uh, 
hopefully I'm just kicking it in a rocking chair with like no teeth and I already got no hair and uh, it was flying too fast for that to stay in. But I'm um, just telling stories, you know, and backing it up with DVDs and that kind of thing and like, hey, check this out, Sonny, you know, and uh, that's kind of my goal is just to have, um, excuse me, uh, great great times in the sky with my friends and, and, and to be a flying human is, um, that's a special thing. You know, my dad was in the air force. So, um, I've always had, um, the love for flying in my genes and, and, uh, to be able to fly my body is just a special thing. And, and my dad loves the stories when I tell him like, check this one out, dad, we went ripping down this cliff. And then the technology that we have these days too, sorry to get on a tangent, but this is how I roll. <laughs> I, uh, I got this headset and uh i'm plugged into my um plugged into my helmet and that plugs into my cell phone and i call my dad from switzerland as i'm exiting uh, and the uh where am i off of like the uh, high ultimate on a wingsuit off the nice ramp that they had there and and i and i jump and i push and i'm all dad i'm i'm going for a base jump i'm taking you with me you know and he's listening and i jump and the microphone cancels out all of the um airspeed it's kind of amazing even though i'm doing like 100 miles an hour and i'm just kind of creeping around the corner and I'm all dad I'm checking out this waterfall and he goes no you're not it doesn't sound like you're doing anything you know and he doesn't believe me because he can't hear the wind you know and I'm like dad seriously I'll have to show you the video because this is amazing right now and I'm, I'm having this conversation trying to convince him that I'm on a base jump as I'm flying around the wall and then headed down into Steckelberg and ripping through a waterfall he's like when I hit the waterfall I was like douche he's like what was that I'm all, I just flew through a waterfall dad <laughs> It hurt a little, you know? And he's like, no way. You know, he still couldn't believe me until I landed. But when the parachute opened, he goes, oh, that does sound like a parachute opening. You know, I've heard that before. And then cruise in, landed. I'm all fired up. And then I um, I made a quick video and sent it to him right away, you know? And it, you can hear me talking on the video, too. So there's proof. It was pretty awesome. How did uh, how did your parents feel about you getting into the sport when you first got into it? Well, the thing is, you don't go tell your mom you're going to go skydiving. <laughs> You tell your mom, yeah. Mom, I went skydiving and it was awesome. You don't make her worry. That's not cool. You know, you, what you want to do is tell her afterwards. And my dad, he just loves it. My, like on, on uh, what was it, Thanksgiving, I was home. I'm all, hey, he's all, are you going to do any base jumping while you're down here? Because the bridge is real close. I'm all, yeah, I need ground crews. I'll ground crew you. Let's call in a friend, you know. And he got one of his buddies, um, Frank Kasparian, came out with us. And, and <laughs> they did ground crew for me, dropped me off up top, picked me up at the bottom, got video. And, like, that was amazing, you know. I'm all, I know, this should be legal, Dad. It's really awesome. And, uh, yeah, and uh, now it is in many places. It's pretty awesome. The sport's come a long way. It's not just a daredevil activity of reckless thugs and and criminals and outlaws it's um it's a sport where where um you know you're you're hiking you're you're achieving um you're you're making your goal by getting to the top and then safely flying down to the landing and it's not just it's not just a um, hiking and jumping endeavor, but it's like you're you're accurate with your canopy, you know, because parachuting is all about being accurate, landing in a cool spot, so you don't have to walk very far back and do another jump. Um, and and there's also fun things, you know, happening in the sport. Like, you know, skydiving, you go out and you touch each other and you make these formations and you do it in different aspects um, of flying and falling. Sometimes you're flat, sometimes you're vertical, sometimes you're atmanati, you know, or angling. And... Uh, and so there's there's many facets of, of skydiving and, and the same thing for base jumping as well. I've free flown off of a building in Dubai with um, I was jumping with uh, Fred and Vince in off the Princess Tower for a project that X Dubai put together and Noah Bonson um, threw it together with Mike Swanson, Jeff Provenzano. Um, we got Roberta um, was there. It was like a whole crew of um, uh, Micah Couch. There was there was like a whole um, slew of, of like um, amazing athletes jumping off this building, and instead of just jumping and tracking away and then opening, we jumped off and went head down. Whoop! We did this like three way big round, and and uh, Fred and Free Falls all. That's what I'm talking about, and I'm like ah! And then we let go and start tracking away, and we open all up next to each other, and and then the next, the, my favorite part of of base jumping is the accuracy, is um how well can you use the equipment. Um, that is saving your life. I mean, yes, it can open the parachute, and yes, you can land without breaking your legs off, but can you land 
on a dime? Can you land in like the exact place you want to land? And and uh, I just taught a course just recently in, in Mexico, in Puerto Escondido, where we're landing within a 10 meter circle, like where you get your pro rating, you know, you make a big circle in the sand. And then um, not just in the middle of that circle, but we put a yoga mat down. And on the middle of the yoga mat in the center, we put a pair of flip flops down. So it's aim small, miss small. And uh, BB totally crushed it, landed in the flip flops. I touched them a couple of times. Um, I touched both of them with two feet at the same time, but didn't get my toes into the flip flop. You know, you got to like lock that in to like really um, ride it through. That's like, I think that's the best you can do is, is land with your toes in flip flops and BB crushed it, showed us boys how to, how to fly parachutes down there. And that was the name of the game down there is practicing canopy skills and preparing to go to Europe and, and land in um, tighter landing zones where you can fly off of amazing mountains and like, Hey, we're going to land in this guy's backyard over here. And, uh, that's all we can get because it's all trees and forests. So let's tighten up our landing accuracy game, you know, and, um, and, and being current at it, <clears throat> getting these guys all tuned up and, and, uh, and landing. And then we're going to go to Europe, but we got to get current before we go to Europe. Cause they're going to take some time off. So there's a whole equation to the sport. You know what I mean? It's not just like go out, throw the rip cord and like, pray you know <laughs> it's it's more like um, be prepared like like i'm a, i was an eagle scout i'm an eagle scout and was a boy scout like forever growing up and and that was our big motto is be prepared and uh and that's it for skydiving too if you're not ready for action <laughs> then the action can take over on you uh, otherwise um you can give input to stay in control and uh, have a nice positive outcome of your jump as long as you are um um, your head's on straight, you're current, and you're ready to react to any situation as it happens, not have a situation happen and then have to, time to think about it and wasting time and then letting that um, emergency situation compile into something worse than it could be when it just originally started. And if you see signs of something started to happen and you're like, whoa, whoa, no, 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 yes, okay, this, 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 yes. And then you fix things before they even occur, before they get bad and, and, and pull you into a downward spiral into the ground. So, Yeah, that was that was one thing I was, I was looking to ask you, like talking about Shane McConkey and that, like I was always a bit like a big mountain free skier growing up. That's kind of how I like – got into kind of action sports, I guess, and, like, watching all those MSP movies back in the day and stuff. And then, like, I saw some base drum clips online. I think it was the Navigo Beach in Greece over that, like, shipwreck. You'd, like, jump down over there. That was, like, the very first one I saw. I was like, oh, like, that, that I want to do that for sure. Zach and Tito's. Yeah, and then... Uh, Same, dude. I haven't been, but I'm going. Yeah. I'm going this year. It's oh, yeah. Hard, dude. I'm like, I'm stop stopping. I'm going to Oh, go. yeah. <laughs> but I like seeing Sh and then seeing Shane do that in like the the movies and stuff was like always super inspiring to me. And then like the tragedy when he passed and stuff, I was just kind of wondering like getting to know somebody like that and like such a strong relationship. And you guys are on the same path. Does that of like affect you at all? Like a reality of the sport that you're doing is like that is a reality, right? Does that affect anything? Hundred percent. You know, that's where, that's where the realism hits home. Yeah. I mean, when you see your best friend go in or you hear about him going in, it's like, crap. We always like, you know, joke about, um, we always make jokes about like, like dark humor of like, ha ah, making like going in and this and that. And then when it happens, it just is like it's slapped your, not just your face, it's your soul. It really hurts, man. It's like, um, it just takes all the wind out of your sails. You got to like back up reevaluate am i doing everything right here am i i want to survive this game you know and i know we've been you know poking at the demons and like you know jabbing at the beast and like just kind of laughing at it and then here it is beast came and, and took your friend you know and um now you got to like make sure your um your head's on straight before you get back into the game too you know um i've heard sayings of people like don't go in on a memorial jump because I've heard of that happening, you know, guys do a memorial jump to celebrate somebody's life and then somebody dies on that memorial jump. So you got to like, Hey man, that's where you really got to pay attention. Cause that's where they want you to pay attention. I don't know. That might have something tied into like, I want to be with them. And you know, um, I don't know. There's so many, so many deep, um, avenues to the whole, the whole spectrum of life and death and how people deal with it. Cause 
everyone deals with it in a different way. And my way is to um, celebrate their life and to enjoy the time that we've had together, you know, and tell stories about them, you know, like, like the time Shane went spinning into Auburn on the first, he tried to do an unpack jump slider up, which was actually slider down because of the hand camp he's hanging down below him. I just like to tell Shane stories now, you know, and like, and times that we've had, um, that's basically what my base camp is. When you come out to Idaho and you learn how to base jump, I'm just telling you stories, um, true life adventures that happened to myself, Shane, Cliff Ryder, Frank and Bali, all my, all my, um, heroes of my, my teammate heroes, um, grown into the sport, you know, and, and, and about my, my teammates on the rebel air force too. I'm just telling stories about these guys and, and life occurrences that happened to us and what we did to survive it. And, um, if this happens to you, then be ready for it by doing this. And if this happens, do this. It's like wrestling. You know, someone throws on a, a wizard. You got to lock it off and hip in. And, or they throw in a half Nelson. You got to clamp it and look away. There's always like, um, there's a counter move to every move that happens. And that's the way it works in parachuting too. Like if you have line twist, um, spread your risers, um, kick out, like pedal a bicycle, get out of the line twist. And maybe you're in a wingsuit and that doesn't work. Maybe you want to put your leg wing together and use your arm wings to unspin you. There's so many tricks to learn. And, and the thing is to keep learning and to not stop learning. I mean, I have 11,000 skydives, but I'm still learning, you know, 6,800 base jumps and I'm still learning, you know? And if I think once you quit learning, then you're a shark that stops swimming and you just, just die. I think you should always keep learning. I think learning is the key to life is just constantly strive to gain knowledge on different things and don't just settle in where you're at, but keep moving forward and go, what's next? What can we do next? How can we do this better? We thought this was the limit of what you can do, but no, we went just up to that limit and we figured out it goes to here. Then we got up to there, then it figured out it went to here. And now we're off the charts and we're just like, now we're like doing things that we never even thought were possible. And, um, and we've been making like all of our dreams come true. And even the impossible dreams are starting to come true because we're at this level. And, and right now is where you got to re be really careful when you're, when you're past all of those original levels of what's possible and you're tickling the demon, you know, and like playing with fire is that's when you start to see people going in, um, you know, go in, die. Um, I, you know, it's, it's not just the beginners in the sports that are going in. It's, it's, it's the um, champions of the sports that are pushing so hard, you know, and they're like, Hey, I, I want to conquer this goal. I want to conquer this goal. And sometimes um, the days are perfect and the conditions are great and you get to conquer that goal. And then other times the conditions aren't good. And if you don't listen to the conditions and what's going on in life and the big picture, grand scheme of things, you're going to get the slap down and, um, and it might not just hurt, it might just be fatal. So you have to respect the boundaries of the sport, but more importantly, you have to respect your own boundaries and know where you are. You have to have a sense of awareness of um, where you are, you know, like a being self-aware is kind of huge in life. And that's, it's one of my things, one of my pet peeves walking through crowds of people, lots of people aren't self-aware, but um, you could tell the ones that are, and those are the ones I like to hang out with because they kind of know where they're at in life and know where they're going. And when you see people who can control that, um, then you're like, okay, now we can push. But until you get to that self-awareness of like, where am I in this sport? What are my limits? What are my weaknesses? That's one thing in life you should find out what you're not very good at doing and then don't do that thing anymore. <laughs> and, uh, but find out what your strengths are and start getting stronger with those and figure out why you're good at that. And then, um, continue to grow and evolve as a human, you know, and a sporting one at that. Yeah. That whole idea. That's kind of what this like podcast is kind of based off to me, like comfort breeds complacency. That's kind of the motto I've always lived by. I I'm an ultra athlete as well. So I did my very first thing was kind of a bike ride across America. Oh, sweet. And I remember coming home from that and, uh, people were like, Oh man, that's like the trip of a lifetime. Like, and I was just thinking in my head, like, yeah, it is like, it's an awesome trip, but Hard work. if that's my peak, like I'm done at 18 already, I was like, yeah, I was like, but thinking like, oh, I'm already done at 18, like, like that can't be it, right? So like that, 
idea of now what? that you was know? like awesome celebrate it yeah now what's next kind of thing but i i was always i had um i had johnny collinson on he's a also a red bull athlete um i was wondering kind of how that partnership came to be uh because like with me right now i have some smaller sponsors but trying to figure out how to take that next step and the things that i do and uh like seeing that you're sponsored one of the like the biggest in the game and on such an elite team the air force how did that kind of come to be we created it you know like we we were skydiving and we were like hey man we want to go jump into this place for um fourth of july so we called up the place and said hey can we come skydive there and like yeah that'd be great and so we would just go out and do um demonstration jumps skydiving for fun and then it started turning into people were calling us and saying hey could you come skydive here we're like okay well it costs this much because we got a plane we got a pilot we got fuel we got to drive out there we got to have a ground crew guy and then all of a sudden they started covering our bills um to go do things and then we got to a level where they wanted to pay us to do all these things. And like, okay, how much is it for you guys to come in? We have this major event, you know? And then we we created the Red Bull Air Force. You know, I get lots of people going, hey, man, how do I get on your team? I'm all, why don't you create a team? You know what I mean? Like, instead of just, like, jump on and, like, woo, I'm, I'm like, you know, I mean, yeah, that's that's awesome. Like, it's um, I don't know how to assimilate that to, like, someone who – I don't even know how to say that, but like someone jumps on a football team, you know, that's going to the Super Bowl, you know, and they're make your own team, make your own future happen. That's my advice to you as opposed to like jump on a team that's going, make your future happen. Cause that's, that's what we did is we were just doing what we wanted to do. And, um, we would write up, um, ideas on bar napkins and then read about them the next day going, man, that's crazy. How can we make that happen? And we started doing it. And the next thing you know, we started getting phone calls like, Hey, we want you guys to do this. We want you guys to do that. Can you, is this possible? I'm like, yeah, that's possible. And then they're like, do you have any ideas that you have for us? And, and I think the thing that really, um, helped me with getting on to, uh, Red Bull, the, the team is being creative. You know, I used to play with Legos as a kid, build things, make things happen. And, and, uh, Hey, what about this idea? What about that idea? What about this idea? Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do these. This is totally possible. And if we do it like this, it'll look even better. And then the other thing is too, for me is it's a, such a visual sport and the way to share it is it's not like everybody can go stand in the sky with you and watch what you're doing when you're skydiving. So we got really good at shooting the videos, you know, and, and making, creating content so that we can share our sport with other people. So it's kind of a combination of all kinds of things, like ideas, like here's how we're going to jump into this place. And while we jump into this place, we're going to fly past this zone with wingsuits. And this is how we're going to shoot doing that. And then not only that, but this is how we're going to share it. You know, it's going to go on this avenue this platform so it's it's like and it's it's there's parts of this that i don't even know about that i'm still learning you know what i mean so there's and uh and it takes a team and 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 hooking up and making the red bull air force was just like um is amazing because we've got athletes that like are the best wing suiters free flyers um belly jumpers um you know like it's all and and helicopter pilots (laughs) edge 540 pilots you know and we put them all together and mix it all up and then like let's do this let's do that okay we're gonna get out we're gonna sit on these wings and then kirby's gonna come by and high five us with his wing tip and you know and and uh and aaron fitzgerald he's gonna bust into a barrel roll the helicopter as luke jumps off and does barrel rolls off of him you know and like that will look cool and we'll catch it with an fpv drone that's out of control amazing looks like a garden gnome chasing you with a camera you know and uh it's, 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 it's creating all of this stuff. And that's the thing is, is get creative in it. I say to anyone who, who has a dream and they want to do something, start starting, like go do it, start doing it. Start at the bottom, work your way up. Cause if you start at the top and think, oh, okay, this is where I want to be. Um, you missed the whole ride. You didn't get to enjoy the way to get to the top and like what it entails to get there. And it's a lot of hard work, you know, and it's, it's like you riding across America. You didn't just, Hey, I rode across America. That was neat. No, you got on your bike, you inflated your tires, checked the oil on your chain. Um, got your self and physical condition to go ride all day, every day, day in, day out. And then you did it. 
not just um, think about it and and plan for it and prepare for it, but the actual going and doing it. That's 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 my favorite part is when you finally jump out of the plane and you're doing it. There's all that anticipation and getting ready and preparing and oh my god, what if I forgot something? What if I forgot this? What if I didn't remember to do that right? And then all of a sudden you jump out and all that goes away and you're like, sweet, I'm doing it now. I'm in it to win it. You know, no turning back. And uh, too late now. <laughs> and I love that about um, the skydiving sport and 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 you've got to go save your life now and make it to the ground and not, and more importantly than that, you got to look good doing it and style it so that, um, cause I've learned the thing about skydiving and base jumping. It's not what you do. That's important. It's how good you look while you do what you do. That truly counts. And if you are looking good doing what you're doing, then you're doing it in a controlled manner where everyone goes, man, that guy, he's got a handle on that sport and is making it look easy. And if I can make a sport look easy where you're watching the video going, I could do that, that's what I'm after. That's my goal is to show you with perfect form and technique that um, it can be done easily. Like I watch guys in the wind tunnel and you see dudes, they don't even move. They're like this. And they're like, but they haven't moved. They move like this much. Their arms are like, I'm like, that's not fair. How does he do that? I can't even, I can't even see what he's doing. I don't even understand that, you know? And in college, I learned, um, went to school to be a PE teacher. And there's like four stages of motor skill development. There's pre-control, control, utilization, and proficiency. Like the pre-control, you are watching it going, What's happening? You know, you can maybe understand what's going on barely, but the control, you can cognitively understand what's going on and you have the ability to perform the task in a, um, in a closed environment, like in a certain place, certain temperature, certain winds. And then that's pre-control and control. Then utilization, now you're starting to perform the skills and do things, but you're still kind of like, you know, got your concentration face on, you're coming in for landing all. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, whoo, pulled that one off. And that's utilization where you could do the sport in a utilized way. But proficiency, now that's that's where you want to be. Proficiency is where you could do the skill day or night, chewing gum, juggling at the same time, doing different things while you're doing your task. You're not like, you could like smile while you're wingsuiting down a place and give an interview to the camera. That's That's what my goal is in life is to do my sport proficiently and um and efficiently i like to i learn um a lot about efficiency in switzerland catching trains because those things are like on time and i'd be like okay we got four minutes i can like i can make it there in three so i can finish this pack job and like start that one and then start running go 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 oh god i started late i better get faster you know what i mean and I learn how to be efficient in in uh, switzerland running to catch trains and cable cars so i could just keep jumping and try to get nine or 12 jumps in a day you know with wingsuits and that's just maximum life enjoyment that's what we're after hell yeah I know, I know you've had so many jumps and like between skydives and base, but does like, is there one that really sticks out to you as like a favorite or one that really means a lot to you? Base jumps? Yeah. Oh man. I think the Petra Jordan jump was all time. And then that was, that was the most technical jump that I'd ever done. It was, I had to use all of my skills from, from, from years of training and learning and studying the game to make that one happen because it's such a tight place. Like when I saw the um, Temple of or the yeah Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones, you see this place and you're like, whoa, I want to jump off that. Yeah. And then when you get there and you start looking at it, you're like, whoa, what am I doing here? This is crazy, man. This this place can kill me. It's like so tight. It's only like it's like 80 feet across from this wall to that wall. It's a slot canyon. It's crazy. And uh, and and in it took me like at least two hours to even figure it out how it could be done safely without like crashing and dying. And like, I'm all, okay. There's two ways I could free fall open and then like, go up against that wall or I could open high and then make a pattern out this way and just totally sink it and surge it and go here. And then, um, and then I'm all, okay. It's totally doable. We got permission from, from the crown prince to, to jump it if we deemed it 
um, safe. And, and my friends pitched it. Miles has a family. He's not going to do it if it isn't safe, you know. And I went there at first thinking, no way, man, this, this doesn't go. I'm all looking around like, how the heck are we going to do, pull this one off, you know. And after two hours of, of hiking around, studying it and looking at it, I'm all, yeah, it's doable. Let me just keep looking, you know. And I spent all day looking at it. And I said, okay, we'll give him an answer. We can do it. And, uh, and then, and then we got an answer back. Okay. You, in two days you can do it. And, and when we got ready to jump off of the cliff in Petra Jordan, it wasn't like a, it's, it's like I did a static line, um, a pilot shoot assist. And, uh, Andy Farrington held my pilot shoot and like, it was his first pilot shoot assist to him all. All right. We're going to tie you in so you don't fall off this rock. And what you want to do is you squeeze this thing right here. This is the bridle. You squeeze that as hard as you can until it rips the skin off your hand. <laughs> and, then, and then just dangle this pilot chute out here. And if you rip that thing, I don't even care as long as you, like, open my parachute. Because if, if you don't static line me tight and quick, if I don't get a quick opening, I'm going to bounce off this wall. I'm going to hit that ledge down below me, and I'm not going to have time to go out and turn around. I'm just going to go pinballing down this canyon. And... Uh, so yeah, taught Andy how to do that. <laughs> but um, as we were preparing to jump it, these magical moments in life happen where, where we're getting everything prepared. The cameras are getting ready. We're on the radios. Okay, he, uh, you got. You might want to lift up and send over there because then you can capture this um, this beautiful um, like there's like a a city a building sculpted into the mountain. It's amazing, and. Uh, the the Petra wall there it's it's um the treasury the treasury wall and it's 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 been there since before Christ it's it's like 400 BC it was it was built it was carved into this gigantic um 500 foot like cliff and I went down a couple ledges so I can get a nice clean um uh, drop to get into it you know like a, without bouncing off the bouncing off the cliff it was still positive so I'm like yeah just missed it and went out but uh. Right before we were getting everyone in position and, and getting ready to do this, and like it's almost go time, so the butterflies are starting to kick. We hear this like, "What's that sound? It sounds like a it sounds like a train is coming, or trucks are driving up here." And it was a dust storm that came out of nowhere, and it was like the universe talking to you. You know, the universe does provide; it will talk to you all the time. And if you listen and can pay attention, you will learn a lot from the universe. You know, Le read the signs, man, because they will guide you to either doing it or not doing it. And this one was a sign of like, okay, it was a calm, perfect morning, and then all of a sudden we hear these trucks pulling up or a train coming, and then the winds picked up to like 35 to 45 miles an hour, and dust was flying everywhere, and everyone's like, cover the lenses, get down, you know, tie in, and we backed up from the edge and watched this dust storm come through, and it was like, oh, crap, it's all over, big storm, time to go home, and then it calmed out, and the dust settled, and then we waited another like 15 minutes, and it was just totally calm, all well, well. If we hear that sound coming, let's not do it, but let's get ready and make it happen right now. Ready? Woo! You know, and uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was all in on that jump. It was, uh, there was no joking around on that one. And the dog that I fed the day before chased me and almost bit me on the landing too. It was pretty funny. I was giving him sandwiches. They're all, don't feed the animals. I'm all, come here, dog. You know, because I love animals. I'm all, just feeding them all the sandwiches that nobody ate. And uh, that dog got all. I'm surprised he was even out the next day after the amount of sandwiches I fed him. But yeah, I landed. And he was chasing me. The mechanic dropped and kept him away. But that jump, the the Petra Treasury Wall jump. Um, unreal in Petra Jordan what a cool place you know and then um like that was just like trip of a lifetime right there you know and it's 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 amazing that I'm rocking and keep creating more trips of a lifetime getting ready to go to the KL Tower um in like four days going to Malaysia to go jump off the KL Tower it looks like the space needle with a spaceship on top like it's just amazing building, and I've been there a few years, but never in February. We're about to go find out what the weather does there in February in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and then head to – I'm on a whirlwind tour going around the world in uh, Malaysia, France to go um, speed ride with my Wicked Dude team. Going to rock out and, and uh, crush some speed riding where you – where you ski and fly parachutes at the same time. And um, that's kind of one of my main sports in this goal. My main goals in the sport is to not just 
do one thing because in life I've always been um, a jack of all trade and a master at none. And I'm trying to like master um, lots of different avenues in the sport, like speed riding, wingsuiting, paramotoring, base jumping, skydiving, angle flying, like all kinds of different things. I'm trying to become a well-rounded individual, if you will. Yeah, for sure. I, I was kind of wondering as well with, uh, like you were just mentioning, oh, if Miles wouldn't do it, if it's not safe, like he's got a family. Did having, like, getting married and having kids, did that change anything for you? Like, I remember, uh, like, uh, Shane McConkey when he talked about, like, would it change anything I do? Uh, like, maybe I'm more, like, focused on the being prepared and stuff but like i'm still going to do the things i love yeah what changed for you with the family or yeah i mean um i i used to um throw caution to the wind and just take a leap of faith sometimes when i was learning how to to base jump because i didn't really understand what i was getting myself into so i was like okay it's time for my guardian angels and time for my uh it's time for my um survival skills the inside survival skills that everybody has that you don't know what they do time to let them take over i'm going to send it you know and i would i would rely on my survival skills and instincts to take care of me a lot in the early days of my um base jumping and i've always wanted to be a stunt man when i was a kid growing up so i'd always think okay if you're gonna crash just hit it like that and like i took judo learn how to roll and like trip and fall and tumble and and uh i've taken some big falls i've jumped off of roofs of houses with bed sheets and my shoes and my hands and like and and umbrellas and yeah i was kind of a wild kid and we used to line up all the bikes and jump over them and and um i got away with a lot but i also learned how to enable my survival tactics and and use them to my advantage and once i started having kids you know um getting married and having kids was like okay time to knock that game off and get real about this and, and make sure you're going to be there. Cause you know, my girls need someone to walk them down the aisle. I need to be there and be strong for them. And, uh, yeah, it, it slowed my role considerably, which is a good thing because if I kept going at that pace, who knows what's going to happen? Most, not most, but a lot of my friends are not with us anymore, you know, cause they've been pushing so hard, you know, and, and uh, and, and developing sports in a way that no one knew could be possible. And now the sports are just growing and growing and growing. And, and with technology evolving the way it is too, like you can go into a, into a gym and jump into a foam pit and practice aerial flips and that kind of thing. And then launching into water and doing that. That's how I learned it. It was off diving board, learning all my aerial skills and uh, a little bit of gymnastics but uh, mostly into a swimming pool. But nowadays you can, there's like places to train with like, like spin belts where you can get into those belts and practice whipping a flip with spins and twists and like, and then someone catches you and then you just stay in the air and then land safely. And, and like you see guys training on trampolines doing like flips and someone throws a mat underneath them so they land on their head. Like at least they don't break their neck. They just kind of like bounce off of it, you know? And there's so many new ways to train everything. And the level of skill that's going into the sport is just going, it's just, and, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying that if you want to do something that someone else is doing, what you're going to have to know is everything that they know and everything that they learned to get to that point. You're not just going to jump up to the top and go, I want to do that. And then just go do it. Um, you're going to need to train all of the baby steps to get to the top of the ladder, um, so that you can do things safely. Otherwise, you're kind of kidding yourself, you know. You don't want to cut corners, skip steps. Um, that's where you get into the danger zone. And my advice is to enjoy the ride. Enjoy each baby step to get to the big picture, you know. And life's a series of baby steps here so that you understand this whole concept of block of how this works. And then these steps, oh, now I understand what the parachute's doing over my head. Okay, if I pull on the front riser or the rear riser, it does this, and it takes this much to recover, and my recovery arc is this, and I have this much time that I have to, like, do it. I have to do things this high above the ground so that I can recover, so I can get a flare, you know. And then you start... Um, tickling those limits a little bit and like, okay, now I'm going to front riser in and I'm going to dive and I'm going to plane out across the ground and see how far I can take it across the ground. And that means I need to let it out the last possible moment so that I can go 
without giving brake input or too much rear riser input. You know what I mean? So it's like you have to um, you have to figure out each little step of of every little aspect of the game to get to a place where you can rope swing base jump off a building and woo huck a bunch of flips and then you know land in a crowd of people on a bullseye. That's that's where I want to see the sport going on ESPN. You know, like down the Ocho. Oh yeah. <laughs> I did uh, when you're going into like these things at the, let's say the top of like uh, like a line or a base jump or something. Um, I asked this again to like Johnny Collinson, the skier at the top of his line, like, how do you kind of manage your fear versus like, um, like turning kind of anxiousness into like excitement or like, I know like with sports I've done too, like a lot of it's visualization. Um, do you use any of those like mental skills or is it kind of just intangible or? Yeah. You have to, yeah. You have to stay calm because if you start getting too amped up, you'll make mistakes. You know what I mean? You have to keep a calm mind. And that's the thing too, is like, we're doing risk mitigation, you know, we're like taking what's dangerous and trying to figure out how to make it, um, performed in a safe manner. And so now you're in a manner, you're in a place where it's super dangerous and you've done all your risk mitigation, but, um, you're still peaking, you know, you're still amping. And the thing is you just got to take a deep breath meditation helps a lot. Um, yoga, you know, I forget what they call it at the end of the yoga where you just kind of lay there and you fall asleep on the mat and like get into your little meditational zone and take a little nap and then wake up and they're like, Oh, that was amazing. My body feels great. You have to kind of be able to control your mind, um, to relax so that you can, cause a quiet mind can see things happening and pick them up and react to them faster than a mind that's freaking out. Once you start to panic, it's over. You know, you're just going to run like a bear turn, run into a tree. You know, it's like, dude, no, a bear. Okay. Um, trip him, run that way. Here we go. You know, you got to have a plan, (laughs) right? You don't have to be the fastest, but you can't be the slowest. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, you have to have a calm mind and, and be able to control. We call it no fear. K N O W fear and you got to know what freaks you out in life. You know, I'm afraid of being alone, you know? So, I mean, <laughs> don't leave me on the exit point. No, nah, I'm good. But, uh, I do like to jump first, um, wind test dummy. I'll go check the winds for you guys and make sure everyone's going to be good. And if it's not, I'll call you and tell you <laughs> don't jump, you know? But, um, yeah, you got to be able to control your, your, your mind and your thought process. And you have to be able to make sp- quick split second decisions and you, the only way to do that is with a calm mind if you don't have a calm mind then you're like your mind's racing and like you're gonna make a mistake and and there's no time for mistakes in these sports so yeah it's uh gotta keep it together man yes sir focus hell yeah that's pretty much it well yeah man well thanks for joining me like i really appreciate you taking the time to talk in and it's such good like information for people trying to get into skydiving or base jumping or just like advice to people in general who want to strive to be the best at what they do like hearing from somebody that is the best at what they do that's uh inspiring for sure i really appreciate you just dishing out some wisdom my pleasure yeah my advice is stop stopping and go do it make it happen Hell yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have, like, what's your social media and stuff so people can check you out? Oh, yeah. I'm on uh, Miles underscore Dasher at um, Instagram and on Facebook. It's Miles Dasher. And uh, I have milesdasher.com. I just kind of go off of me, my name. I, 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 me, 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 me. But if you check out milesdasher.com, that could lead you to pretty much everything, you know. And, uh, and base camp, if you're looking in to learn how to base jump, um, you know, get your skydive on, get your paraglide on, learn how the canopy works, come see me in Idaho. Yeah, but everything's there on milesdasher.com um, to kind of check out who I am, what I do, that kind of deal. So check it out. And uh, I don't really have things for sale on there or anything like that besides my base school. And um, Miles D's base camp, been doing it for 18 years, and I uh, got a really good track record. And making wishes and dreams come true here in Idaho. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, thank you. It was an uh, honor to meet you and talk with you. Be safe out there. Yeah, I will, for sure. Nice. Thanks for watching. Keep it on so bad.